Hi everyone and welcome to this second live session on the Left Angle Twitch channel. My name is Francois Grassard, I'm one of the co-founders at Left Angle and also CCO of the company. And today we're gonna dive into 3D and talk about 3D and how to work with 3D in Autograph, how to merge 2D and 3D assets and elements in the same scene. But before diving into these topics, uh, let's talk a little bit about USD. USD stands for Universal Send Description and it's the system we use in Autograph to work with 3D. It's a, it's a way to exchange information between 3D application made by Pixar a long time ago and used for their own production, but open source by Pixar a few years ago. And um, previously it was pretty difficult to exchange information between uh, Blender and 3ds Max and Maya and other 3D packages uh, because they always all speak a different languages. And uh, by open sourcing uh, USD, we have a chance to finally have a unified format to exchange information between 3D application. That's one of the most important parts about USD, but USD is not only about exchanging information, it's also about building information and creating scene. Uh, a major difference between USD and FBX or GLTF or uh, maybe Colada for uh, the oldest one um, is that instead of importing object into a scene, name a stage in a USD, USD connect and link to other elements in the scene to everything. The word connected is uh, connecting instead of importing is really important here because in autograph you use USD to connect to external assets, to connect to external stages, external scene. So if you make any change in this original information, this original scene, every modification will be automatically updated in autograph. And that's really important to keep this in mind. Okay. So, uh, USD also have a really interesting thing named Hydra. Hydra, it's a way to create a communication pipeline between the scene and maybe a host who will use USD. Uh, Hydra is made to make a communication between render engine and the USD scene itself, the USD stage itself. So virtually any kind of render engine could be used in Autograph because when you put something into a timeline, when you put an object, when you put an object in the scene, when you merge two assets into the same stage, we under the hood, we create a USD stage. So if a vendor creates a little bridge named a Hydra render delegate to make a communication bridge between uh, this render engine and Autograph, virtually we could use any render engine in Autograph, any existing render engine, such as V-Ray, such as uh, Renderman, uh, such as maybe Cycles. Uh, so that's really interesting and that's why USD is not only about exchanging information between uh, application, but also about a new way to build scene, to build stage, and also to communicate with external render engine. So that was for the introduction to keep in mind that USD is a new game changer into the 3D industry. Uh, so that's the reason why we decided to base all the 3D stuff, all I'm gonna use, I'm gonna show you in this demonstration is based on USD in Autograph. So let's dive into the software and uh, take a look on, on how you can work with 3D. So here is Autograph and uh, I'm gonna start by a really simple project here. Um, I'm gonna import a headphone model and as you can see here, uh, the extension, the file extension is USD as a universal scene description. This scene has been exported uh, from Blender because I uh, mainly use Blender for 3D stuff. But Maya now have a really good uh, USD exporter and 3ds Max 2, and a lot of software try to uh, export all their hierarchy, their 3D hierarchy into USD to facilitate to make this exchange more easily. So I'm gonna simple uh, drag and drop this USD scene into my project panel and double click it to open it. Remember, I not importing this asset, but I'm connecting to this asset. So if any change is made uh, in this original file, everything will be updated in Autograph 2. 
Okay, keep this in, keep this in mind. Um, when I double click on uh, this USD assets, my viewer switch to 3D mode. So uh, when I create a composition, as you can see, I am in 2D mode, but when I double click this asset, I switch to 3D mode. And here I can uh, have only the silhouette of this headphone because I don't have any light in the scene yet. So I'm gonna add light after uh, after this, but for now I only have the object, the object without any light in the scene. So I can turn around, I can move my camera, and for now it's not really a camera, it's just a temporary camera, we name this a free camera, it's just a first person view of your scene to have another, another whole view of all the objects available in scene. So I'm gonna start by create a real camera, okay, and for this I have to put this asset into something, into a container, into a stage. And we have different way to create a stage in Autograph. The first way is to simply by putting this asset into this composition. Okay, so when I put a 3D asset into a composition, automatically this asset is put into a stage, a stage render on the fly and the images is bring back to the composition so you can composite them. For now, I cannot see anything just because my default camera provided by this composition, it just plays between the two speakers. And if I reduce the size of my headphone, now I can see my headphone here. So remember, this is a default camera, but I want to create my own camera to frame the headphone. So for this, I can switch this 2D composition to 3D mode. And now I can navigate into this scene, put my camera here. The difference between um, watching this scene through the composition um, and double clicking this asset here and just inspecting this asset is the format. As you can see, my composition have a full HD format here and I can see the limit, the outline of this format here to see exactly how the frame will be after the rendering. So here I'm gonna put my camera like this, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a new camera based on this point of view. For this, I click on this camera icon on the top right of the viewer and click on the create camera from view. Now I created a new camera. You can see this camera in the timeline, in the stack, okay? And if I move now here and just remove uh, the checkerboard background, you can see this camera. This camera is now created for real and it will be used to frame the whole scene to shoot the world scene. So I can get back to this camera and I can also lock to this camera. So now if I select this camera and inspect these transformation parameters, if I move this camera, this camera is moving for real. You attach this camera to the current view and when you move the current view, you move the camera as well. Okay. So I'm gonna um, get back to 2D. Uh, and when I get back to 2D, I create a 2D render. Once again, I don't, don't have any light in the scene for now, but an alpha channel is generated based on this 3D rendering done on the fly through this camera and the image is bring back to the, to the 2D composition pipeline, compositing pipeline. So, um, I'm going to simply add a light in the scene here by adding a light in the stack. Once again, we're going to see different way to merge 3D uh, data and 3D element in the same stage, but that one of the way available to merge information. Going to switch this light type to dome light. And as you can see now, a uh, uniform light is creating in the scene. It's like being in a white room with exactly the same amount of light coming from everywhere. And in parallel, parallel I'm going to import these images here, name sometime a IBL or a light probe. IBL stands for image based lightning. And I'm going to light this thing using this image. In Autograph, we integrate a render engine named Filament. Filament is made by Google and uh, it's a real time render engine. So there's a lot of tricks, a lot of reflection tricks, a shadow tricks to uh, be able to render the scene in real time. Exactly the same that can be done when a game engine is created. So I'm gonna simply select this light here, get, getting back to the composition. And now I'm going to drag this environment to uh, the env environment map slot of the light. And as you can see, now we use this image for refraction, maybe refraction for shadows and things like that. And most important, think about this image. This image is a NeXR file. It's a 32-bit per channel file. What does it mean? It means that when you have this kind of really bright light with uh, only white pixel, actually this pixel is not white, it's brighter than white. And if I reduce the aperture of um, the viewer, it's a gain, but you can think about 
uh, the aperture of a, of a camera in real life, you can retrieve um, information, you can retrieve detail from these images. So that's really important to keep this in mind. You can light a scene using this kind of environmental image. Name also an IBL from some from, from time to time. So let's get back to this composition. Okay, and now I can get back to the 3D rendering and I can see my light here, my environment light here. I can reduce the size of the icon display in the 3D render and I can uh, switch to my camera, lock to my camera and move my camera in this 3D renderer. Now I can select this light and I can also play with the rotation, for example, of this light to make my environment turn around me uh, using a rotation, for instance, of uh, 360 uh, degrees, uh, 180. We're going to animate actually this uh, rotation. Autograph is based on a coordinate system with the Y up. Uh, some software use the Z up axis or the Y up. Maya use the Y up, we use the Y up too. So if I want to rotate this environment using the green axis or pointing up, I have to work with the Y axis and turn the Y axis. But it's gonna depend of the USD stage you connect to Autograph. If um, you work with a Z, uh, a software work with a Z axis up, this uh, parameters can be switched between Y and Z. It depends of uh, the way you previously work in your 3D package. So instead of creating keyframes to animate these elements, I'm gonna use something we use on the previous live session uh, named generator, because I'm gonna connect the generator's current time uh, to this Y axis and to this Y value, Y rotation value. And as you can see here, this environmental image is now turning around me automatically by taking the value in seconds at current time, so it's 20 seconds, and putting this value as a rotation value. Because it's rotating pretty slow, I'm gonna uh, use the multiplier for this, for instance, multiply it by 50, and now as you can see, the environment is rotating much faster. Okay, so now when I, uh, obviously I can also animate the camera and do this kind of stuff, but I'm going to talk about this using a more complex scene, but now when I get back to 2D, as you can see, now I have a 2D rendering and I can merge this rendering this with 2D elements. For instance, I uh, gonna import this background here and put this background behind the 3D rendering and gonna scale it up a bit, okay? And as you can see, my scene is rendered on the fly and I can also put a left angle logo above the 3D rendering. It's really important to understand how it works here. When you have several 3D objects packed together, one uh, over the other, uh, these three elements will be rendered uh, once and uh, now put image will be used and stack into the timeline. Okay, so if I put this layer below the 3D rendering, the 3D element who produce this rendering, I can move this uh, layer and create a sandwich between these two 2D images and the 3D rendering. So that's for uh, the first uh, the part of how to work in 3D. You render on the fly, you can composite 3D elements with 2D elements, and you can also apply effect. For instance, if I uh, take this final rendering and put it into a new composition, I can add blur. So I can blur the resulting rendering and I can composite everything and do color correction and do grading right away uh, just after the rendering. So remember, everything is rendered in real time here. That's the most important, especially for motion designers who need to really quickly render uh, animation using cube or using uh, abstract background or using assets like this, okay? So I'm gonna start for a blank scene and just talk about another way to create 3D stages, 3D scene, and merge 3D assets at the same place. Um, I'm just gonna create a new composition and create a new scene. A new scene in autograph is just a blank space with nothing in it it's at the start, at the beginning, and you can add here primitive such as a cube here, and you can put this scene into your composition as a 3D asset. And once again, you can switch to 3D, you can frame this whole envi environment, this whole world, and you can create a new camera from view, okay? And 
shoot this scene, this complete scene, if you get back to this scene and maybe add another primitive, such as a sphere here, uh, you can select the sphere and put this sphere out of the cube, okay? And now if you get back to the composition, we use this scene as an asset, you can shoot the entire scene. So that's really important to understand that you pre-compose it's, it's not exactly the word, but you can think about the term pre-compose uh, 3D scene before using it into your timeline, okay? This 3D element can be animated using exactly the same generators and modifiers uh, used by a 2D element. For instance, I'm gonna select this cube and go to the transform parameters, and I can create keyframes here to animate the scales. And if I create keyframes here, uh, I'm not going to use keyframes, but I'm going to use something I prefer with an animator, okay? An animator is made to uh, make a parameters evolve from a starting value to an ending value. And here I'm gonna say, I want to use uh, an animator to go from zero at scale, a scale of zero to a scale of one. And uh, I want to uh, have a target value here. And as you can see here, because I'm, inspecting the scene, so that's the reason nothing is moving when I move in the timeline because I'm a space of the composition, and here I'm the space of the scene, okay? So now, when I move in this composition, as you can see, the animator is used to animate the cube. I can use different kind of interpolation, such as bounce here, okay? And this, the interpolation will be different. I'm gonna use the over bounce, so, yeah, so now you can see the cube bouncing using this interpolation. Remember, you have 49 interpolation, different interpolation type with the uh, uh, keyframes and also with the uh, animators modifiers. So keep this in mind, a scene can be completely blank at start and you can populate this scene using primitive, but you can also populate this scene using assets. Uh, if I get back to um, the mm, spaceship here, okay? I'm gonna, going from blank scene, gonna close the project, okay? And put this USD assets in autograph. I double click the assets because I want to inspect its contents. And now I can see here I have a character, okay? Moving his feet, like this one. And these characters is, not only one characters, you have also a plane, you have also a light, who light this scene, you have also a camera, you have a bunch of things in this scene, and now I want to filter this scene because I want only to keep the character. So for this, I'm gonna create a new scene, a blank scene, and now I link to this USD assets. And by linking this USD assets, now I have access to all the objects uh, all the components of this scene, and I can filter things, I can override things, I can move things, I can remove things. For instance, I'm gonna remove the light here, so now everything is black. I'm gonna remove also the camera, I'm gonna remove uh, the plane on the ground. Okay, it's gone. And also gonna remove the amateur because this scene is a skin character that exporting for Blender, so what you see here is real-time skinning done by by autograph. So now I create a new composition. I'm gonna rename this scene character and drop this character in this composition. Okay, so for now, obviously you don't have any light like previously, but you can also see only the feet of your character because the default camera provided by the composition is a place at zero uh, on the Y axis. So it's uh, on the ground, on the floor. So to create a new camera, once again, you switch to 3D mode, you frame your character, you create a new camera. So pay attention, please, to the stack when I click the button. You have a new camera now available in uh, the timeline. And now you can simply move your camera to frame your character. So now only the character without any light. And I'm gonna import a second asset. The second asset, it's a sci-fi corridor with lightning with a bunch of light with environment light in this scene. Now I get back to this composition, I drop this asset in the same timeline, and as you can see, the two assets, including the lightning, are now merged into a unified stage. So I can uh, just check to get back to this camera. I'm gonna reduce the focal length to have a wider view. Okay, like this. And uh, I'm just gonna rename this character, character one, and gonna duplicate this character and now I can simply move this character in the scene, in the corridor, like so, okay, and just gonna move a little bit my camera to see my character 
at the same time. So this 3D assets, skin characters exporting for Blender, can be time offset it exactly the same way you time offset an animation. For instance, I just have to click on this block and move this block in time. I'm just gonna remove the 3D overlay regarding the selection. And obviously, before this in point, this first visibility key, my character is not there, but I can simply take this visibility key and push it to the left. So my character will appear from the beginning of my composition, of my animation. And obviously nothing has been defined outside this range of this animation. So for now my character is complete, completely immovable before this uh, range. So to, to fix this, I can simply select my uh, initial USD, my original USD assets, and just change the before and after parameters, you can have continue. So you maintain the previous frame before the first visibility key or the last frame after the last visibility key, or you can simply loop your animation or even bounce your animation. So now my characters is always are always moving by simply playing the animation back and forth between uh, this range, in, the, in, in this range, okay. So now I can have any any numbers of characters in this uh, in these corridors, but I'm gonna stick on two. Uh, obviously, I can once again move my camera here, but I can also animate my camera using only uh, this uh, this position parameters here in the stack. Okay, and now if I switch to 2D, as you can see, the frame is rendered on the fly, and I can still see the animation. I can create keyframes to animate my camera, like so. Okay, so now I have a moving camera passing by the first character and the second characters. And once again, for this rendering, we use filament and filament is provided with a bunch of post effects. And in this post effects, we have ambient occlusion, who will add penumbra and shadows around uh, the geometry to uh, have more contrast in the image. We also have a fog to have a kind of death of field, not exactly a death of field, but a fog according the distance in this uh, corridor. And we also have the death of field, the real death of field. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna rise these parameters a bit to have a better quality uh, and gonna play with the uh, focus distance just to have a focus on the first character here. Okay, I'm gonna get the right value here. Okay, um, gonna place a first keyframe and keep focusing on this character and suddenly switch to the other one, this one, okay. So now I focus on the first characters and change the focus to focus on the second one. Okay, so here we create a scene, we um, merge 3D assets in the same stage, we uh, duplicate elements, and uh, we create a scene from scratch using external assets. So we introduce uh, the concept of um, 3D stock shots, actually, okay? If you have a bunch of people walking in the street, you want to create a street in 3D and uh, put a lot of people in the street, you just have to connect to external assets of walking people and you duplicate them and you put them here and there. So it's like working with 2D stock shot, but in 3D. And you can really quickly uh, create a scene and populate a scene like this. So now, if you want to merge to the element here, once again, this 3D rendering will become a 2D images at the end. So I can, for instance, create a 2D composition, put this composition here and add post effects. Um, so any kind of 2D effects can now be applied to the scene, such as a blur, for instance, like this one. But I can also uh, import uh, 2D images like this mountain here use this uh, space mountain image here and convert this image to a 3D plane. So now if I get back to uh, the 3D viewer, I'm gonna just turn on the post effect. You can put this image on a 3D plane and convert it, convert this image to a 3D plane, put it outside the corridor and maybe rise a bit its scale, turn it by 90 degrees. Okay, and now you have something to see through the window. Okay, I'm gonna put this up. Okay. 
I can turn off the visibility of the camera because it's really annoying here. So I'm gonna remove the light and the camera and just want to focus on this plane with place outside the corridor. So I'm get back to my camera here, okay? And now I can see my plane through the window outside with something here. Okay, so you can convert a 2D image to a 3D plane, plane and place it in the corridor. So that's uh, what you can do when you want to merge 2D images, convert it to 3D plane and put 3D assets together in the same scene. But you can also do the opposite. You can also work with 2D and put a 2D element into a 3D environment. For this, I'm gonna use this OpenEXR file sequence with a green screen here. And once again, we work with EXR files because EXR are 16-bit per channel or 32-bit per channel float. And when you have a really bright area like this, you can simply reduce the aperture and grab details who was previously completely gone, okay? All the details are kept, all the value over bright, all the, the value over white are kept and you can simply get the value down to retry this kind of detail. So all you're gonna do in uh, autograph will be done in 32 bits per channel all the time. So no value will be lost at all. I'm gonna use this image sequence in a new composition and just gonna add a color difference scaler who is our in-house scaler. Pretty similar to the key light, uh, you can see almost exactly the same parameters. I'm gonna switch to source, gonna select my background color and uh, switch to corrected matte. I'm not gonna, gonna spend too much time on the king part here, uh, but just to have a completely black background and completely white foreground. And just also uh, going into the matte uh, section to create a garbage mat around my character like so, just want to move my mask. I'm just gonna work on the first 10 seconds of the uh, of the sequence. I just want to move this point to grab the arm of the character and everything's good. Okay, just moving this a bit to make this point disappear. And uh, now I'm gonna get back to the color different scaler and switch to final. So now I have a character who is completely um, cut out and with the green screen removed. Uh, now I'm gonna, um, gonna remove the checkerboard background and I'm gonna simply switch this 2D plane as I did previously with the background image uh, on the previous scene. I'm gonna simply switch this layer to a 3D plane. So now if I switch back to a 3D view, Okay, preview view of my composition. I can simply select my character and move it like so and move it on the right. And now I'm gonna merge this 2D information used on a 3D plane to merge this character into a 3D environment. And for this, I'm gonna import this cave model. And double click on it just to inspect it. As you can see, it's a pretty dense model with a lot of polygon made with photogrammetry. And uh, we already have an environment image, an IBL used to light the scene. So if I get back to the composition, get back to the 3D mode and drop this cave in the same scene, as you can see, the two elements are now merged into the same stage. So I can place my character here in the scene I can also uh, just fix the problem with the fit here by a simple trick is uh, importing a new USD asset will be a rock. A rock will be placed just in front of the fit to hide the way, to hide the fact we have a ground and I don't want to uh, do a lot of roto here. So I hide uh, this, uh, the fit to, to avoid rotoing things. And uh, I'm just gonna select the characters, just focus on it to have my uh, camera orbiting around, around my characters. And now I can uh, also add a new light, for instance, here. Okay, I'm just gonna reduce the guide size of this light. Um, change this color, just changing his intensity, a bit more maybe. Okay, really flashy light and change its color to something more reddish. Maybe orange like this, okay, maybe. Okay, drop the intensity a bit. So, because the characters was initially uh, 2D images, you can apply any kind of 
to the filters, to the modifiers to this image. That's really important to keep this in mind. So if you want to blur your character, or if you want to change, uh, for instance, this U, I'm gonna just add a U shift. As you can see, you can change the color of your characters in 2D, but projected in 3D on a, on a 3D plane, and everything is going to be merged. Okay, so I want to create now a new camera once again. So because I don't have any camera in the stack yet, so I create a new camera from view. I have a camera here, and um, just gonna reduce the focal length, move my camera like so, and get back to the 2D view. Okay, so once again, because I use filament and filament have a lot of uh, post processing, I can enable the depth of field. I can simply get back to my camera parameters and change the focus distance to focus on my character. Okay, as you can see, there's a bunch of artifacts here, but if I raise the value to 30 like so, artifact is gone. So that's a way you can integrate a 2D element into a 3D scene. And more important here, you can see that filament is creating a color output, but you can also create a depth output. It's not really visible here, but I'm just gonna create a new composition and put this composition here and add a auto contrast modifier to visualize this depth of field. So as you can see, a depth uh, pass has been created for the whole 3D scene, the scene based on only 3D object, but also the uh, part of the scene created by putting a 2D element onto a 3D plane. So now you can use this to add fog, uh, you can add this to add uh, defocus using the defocus modifier provided um, bundle with autograph, which is pretty, pretty fast and pretty impressive. So that's the way you can work from 2D to 3D and integrate to the environment uh, around to the uh, 3D environment around to the character. So that's it for this part of the 3D project. Now I'm gonna switch to uh, something else to a basketball project. I'm gonna simply load the final uh, project right now to show you the final result. So project is loading and we talk about using 2D element and putting this 2D element on a 3D plane and placing this 3D plane in a 3D environment. But you can also do the opposite. You can also use 3D composition and 3D in 2D sources as texture for 3D composition, for 3D objects. Using UVs, uh, if you have UVs exported with your 3D uh, object, you can map 2D composition on your 3D object. So for instance, here uh, we have a composition with the content, oh, okay, because this one is locked, we have top screen here, okay. And this element is a 2D composition created with grid, mosaic effect, text, a constant for the background. And we have another composition for the bottom screen here, just with a background image, mosaic effect, a grid effect, and also a noise passing by in the front of uh, this image, like so, something really simple. But that's really interesting to see that you can create a composition and use this composition as a 3D texture. So to do this, I'm gonna just closing this project and importing this logo, this title, and also the world set. If I double click on the world set and switch to uh, the checkerboard background, I can see the set is look like a giant mushroom, but uh, as we're gonna see, it's uh, pretty different with the lightning. So once again, I'm gonna create a composition, put my set in my timeline, okay? And here I have an environment map, once again, an EXF file with an environment map, and I'm getting back to the composition, creating a light, switch the light to a dome light, and I'm gonna use this environment map to light my scene. So now if I switch back to 3D mode and just move around, I can now see the geometry of my scene. I can also moving inside this uh, set. I'm just gonna reduce the focal value to have a wider view of the scene like this. Okay. Once again, a bunch of post effects are really useful in this case if you want to create reflection in the ground. Uh, for instance, I'm gonna turn on the screen space reflection here. So I'm just gonna rise the thickness a bit and also the distance here. So uh, you can see here the left angle logo in the ground 
is reflecting, uh, you can see the frame here, the white, the black frame with the white outline reflecting on the grand right here, okay. And instead of using the USD asset directly into my timeline, I'm gonna create a blank scene and I'm gonna link this wall set to this USD scene to filter things, to change a few things. And now the only things I have to do is to simply delete the initial, um, the initial USD file and link this scene to my composition. It looks exactly the same, but now you have the ability to simply go through the whole hierarchy of your scene and change a few things. For instance, I have access to all the material, including the material of the ground. And I can click here on edit primitive and I'm going to override these parameters. I'm going to override this material by clicking the edit primitive button. As you can see here in the project panel, I now have a scene texture. The scene has been extracted and linked again to the base color parameters here. If I enter this folder, I have access to this, um, to this image here. Okay. And just gonna get back to the home and I can switch this texture by another one. For instance, I'm gonna use this player image here. Okay. Gonna get back to this material and now I can switch the wood texture by another image. Okay, strange image obviously because it's not made to be fitted into this area, but you can switch and you can also apply modifier. For instance, I'm going to uh, add a mosaic effect here on the texture used by uh, the 3D object. So for instance, uh, I'm looking for the mosaic here. And if you want to create a Minecraft effect with a really pixelated texture like this, you can simply increase the number of pixels to create this mosaic effect. Okay. You can also, if you want, add a U-shift modifier just to uh, change the color of your ground. Okay. So every 2D texture used by a 3D scene can have modifiers apply on it. Okay. And because you can override everything, as you can see here, I have different uh, materials named screen bottom and screen top. And once again, you can simply uh, select here this uh, material and click on edit primitive. I'm going to simply uh, use the shading mode none will be unlit. And as you can see here, I can simply define a color for this material, but I can also create a new a new composition, for instance, uh, maybe 1280 by uh, 400 or maybe 250, okay? And I'm, I'm gonna drop this image here, okay? And maybe add a noise on it. I'm gonna simply change a few parameters like the frequency, like the contrast, like this one. And I also adding a transform parameters just to scale it up a bit like so and rotating this noise like so. So now I use the uh, blending mode to maybe uh, have a better blending between the two texture. It doesn't matter, but I'm just gonna look for this one. Maybe, maybe this different one. Okay. It's ugly, but at least it's feasible. And um, now I get back to the original composition, this one here. Um, I get back to 3D. So now I retrieve my temporary uh, camera named Free Camera because for now I didn't create any camera yet. And I move to the screen bottom. And as you can see, the base color use only a solid color for now, but I can use this composition and drop this composition as a texture. And now this texture is used by this material. So this texture can be dynamic. You can animate everything. You can add any kind of modifier completely dynamically in 2D, then use this composition as a texture. If I reload the initial project, okay, everything is back. And just to show you this first banner on the top is a composition. This background image is also a composition. I expose some parameters using, uh, I can expose some parameters using uh, the uh, composition parameters here. So I'm gonna create a tab. I'm gonna limit control like this. And I want to go to the top screen where I have my text layer. I'm gonna simply use the source of this text layer. Okay. And I'm gonna drop these parameters here. So now, as you can see, the text, the source text used by this banner is 
uh, visible here and I can simply change the text to say hello to Twitch. So now everything is dynamically recomputed, calculated, rendered on the fly, and you can create a template with, with, with this really easy, sorry, <laughs> really easy uh, control panel where you can uh, dynamically change the title, change the position, maybe the color of this logo, okay? And because you can use autograph using command line, you can also automate all these tasks just by sending your new sentence, hello to Twitch, hello, blah, 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 and render automatically your project without opening the graphical user interface of uh, autograph. So that's really important for TV channel, for instance, if you want to really quickly create a new animation using exactly the same template, but only by changing the name of the team on the top and maybe uh, the image of the player in the background, you can do this really quickly and just relaunch the rendering to have a new animation. So that's how you can use 2D stuff, 2D animation, 2D composition as 3D texture in a 3D scene. So, just to finish my presentation, I'd like to show you a project I'm working on since a few days. Uh, it's NPR rendering. NPR stands for non-photorealistic rendering. Uh, it's a way to create 3D rendering who is not realistic, but looking uh, like pencil or maybe cocoa like this one. Okay, so at the beginning, it's a simple 3D scene. I named the composition full rendering here, and I'm gonna to switch to 3D just to turn around a bit to see what happened in this scene. So once again, skin character, uh, simple animation, a run cycle, like this one, okay? And I have this really simple pencil texture. I just grab a piece of paper and just draw a few lines like this and make this texture uh, tileable so I can repeat it to the infinity. And I create a, a simple composition. Uh, named pencil pass because I have three pass for the darker part, for the middle part, and for the brighter part. And I will compose this three part in the same, um, in the same composited final composition. So in this case, I use my 3D geometry and only my 3D geometry uh, to generate an alpha channel. And I cut out my pencil texture by this alpha channel like so. Okay, and I have different kind of paths, once again, dark, bright, and middle gray. And finally, I composite everything into the same composition to create this really interesting uh, rendering. And I also expose a few parameters in this control panel just to increase, for instance, the fuzziness of my rendering to have uh, something more blurry. Blurry is not exactly the same, but fuzzy. Um, and I can also rotate the set position because everything is computed in real time here uh, before all the effect applied, obviously. So it takes uh, a few... Uh, a few uh, a few seconds to compute the final image. Here, everything is connected to parameters inside composition, inside 3D composition. Uh, you can increase the contrast. Uh, once again, the uh, sun orientation here is just uh, rotation parameters of the sun accessible into the full rendering composition in 3D with a light in it. And I just drag and drop the parameters to expose these parameters and rename it run, uh, sun orientation. Here you can also increase the contrast and reduce uh, the shadow on the ground. You can also uh, have a black and white balance of the stroke itself. And you can also increase the stroke size and you can also increase the contour of uh, the silhouette. Uh, I have here contour thickness like so. so just a simple example, not so simple, uh, but uh, we are really, really interested at Left Angle about NPR, not photorealistic rendering. And we want to make more and more uh, feature to focus on this topic. So um, it's just a simple test, but we want to do more. And just to finish this presentation, just to show you, we can manage, I talk about this, uh, skin characters, 3D objects, static 3D characters, but we also um, can ingest uh, fluids animation like this one. Okay, so here I'm gonna switch to another render engine named Storm because as I previously said, um, because of Hydra Render Delegate, we can connect to other render engine. Okay, so here I have Filament and I have Storm. And as you can see, everything is white because it's too bright because this uh, USD assets contain a really bright light. So once again, I'm gonna simply connect this chocolate fluid USD assets uh, to a blank scene. I'm gonna 
go through the hierarchy and just turn off the light. And now, as you can see, I'm gonna switch to a full screen mode. As you can see, I can play this fluid animation. It's pretty huge, uh, almost 12 gigabyte. Okay, so uh, it's a fluid cache recording USD cache um, cache system. Um, we are working on importing more and more 3D object file formats such as OBJ, FBX, and maybe also over point cache and um, cache file such as OpenVDB, uh, if we can use a render engine who can render volume effect. So that's it. You can use 2D element as a 3D uh, as a texture for 3D object. You can render on the fly and compose it on the fly right away using all the modifiers available in Autograph. You can also use skin characters. You can do non-photorealistic rendering. You can work for uh, VFX. You can work for motion design. And you can also uh, handle really, really huge file like this one, once again, in real time, depending of, obviously of the computer you use. So, that's it for today. Uh, I'm back on the screen. Thank you very much for being uh, with me today for this presentation. Uh, I hope you find this presentation interesting and all the features related to 3D in Autograph interesting too. So thank you very much for being here today. We also be at NAB. Uh, I will talk about this uh, in the next live session in two weeks, but uh, we will be at NAB. We have a booth with our friend at Revision FX. So if you are on the show, please, uh, pass on the booth. It will be uh, really interesting to, to show you a few things and to answer to question. Thank you very much, Reason. Uh, excellent demonstration. Well done. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with me today. Have a nice day. Have a nice night, depending on uh, the place on the planet you are. And see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.